friends, Krista here. Thank you so much for stopping by Books and Jams today. I'm glad that you're here to hang out with me for a bit. I am doing today a shelf spotlight, which is something that I do every month where I highlight different books on my shelves and talk about maybe like something that's on the cover or a word that's in the title or some kind of category of books just to highlight different books on my shelves. Because it's middle grade March, which I'm loving so, so much, of course, today's topic had to be middle grade book related. So today I'm going to be talking about the highest rated middle grade books on my shelves. I have two categories, both my red books and my unread books. And I'm actually going to be doing an additional shelf spotlight this month where I'm going to talk about my lowest rated middle grade books that are on my shelves, both read and unread. So I have 20 books here. I did go through Goodreads and make a list of all the highest rated books and, that are on my shelves. Um, there are some that I've read that are not on my shelves. So these are just the ones that are on my shelves, the 10 highest on my shelves that I've read and 10 highest that I haven't read. I have two other qualifications that I made when I created these lists. One of them is that I just have one book from a series, especially on the red side of things. You will see Land of Stories, Keeper of the Lost Cities, and Harry Potter. And I think all three of those series have more than one book in that top 10, but I just picked one of them. The whichever one came highest, whichever one was first, I included. So I didn't include two or three different Keeper of the Lost Cities books, even though I love them. I am only gonna, I only picked one just so that we could get more of a variety of books. And same with the unread books. I also only picked one from a series. Uh, and also the book had to have more than 500 ratings on Goodreads is my second qualification. I was going to make it a thousand, but I had a couple books that had been sent to me or that were just really newer that I wanted to include that have just over 500. So I just made it 500. Ratings are so subjective and I really don't put any stock in these numbers except that a lot of people really loved these books. When we look at the books that I have read, I gotta say, I pretty much agree <laughs> with this top 10. Like there's some fabulous books in this stack. So let's start with the books that I have not yet read. And I'll go through the 10 books that I own that are highest rated. I'm going to start from the lowest of the high ratings all the way up to the top rated book of my unread middle grade books. So the first one is with 4.35 August Isle by Ali Standish. I actually should put this on my middle grade March TBR. This was one of my patron picks from last year that I just never got to. I think from maybe November. I don't know. The holidays came and I just lost all everything. I just didn't get to it. Uh, but I did start this at one point. I got a, about 50 pages in. This is about a young girl whose mom sends her away to a town that she grew up, uh, spent her summers when she was growing up. Miranda has always wanted to visit there, but she doesn't like the circumstances under which she got sent there this summer. So she's a little annoyed with the fact that she has to go hang out at this island. Um, but then there's more to this island than, than meets the eye. She makes some friends and has some adventure and I think is going to learn some things about her mom in particular while, while she's there. So August Isle, I'm very excited about it. 4.35. With 4.36, I have a Grace Lynn book, When the Sea Turned to Silver. Oh man, this is a heavy, <laughs> this is a heavy book. I read where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn. And I'm hoping that this is similar, just an adventure story with cute illustrations and including some Chinese folklore. I mean, there's some full page as well as chapter heading illustrations. Pin Mai's grandmother always has the most exciting tales for her granddaughter and the other villagers. I'm not even going to continue. Just an adventure story set in China with some Chinese folklore. Very excited. With 4.37, I have Caterpillar Summer by Gillian or Jillian McDunn. I'm not sure how she pronounces her name. I do need to get that sticker off there. I've heard good things about this one and it's 4.37 is a pretty high rating. Kat had an ocean of questions she hoped the island would answer. It kind of sounds honestly pretty similar to August Isle only with a sibling group rather than just the one kid. Kat knows her younger brother Chicken the best. She knows that he loves sharks, that he does not like loud noises, tags in his shirt, or being called Henry, and that sometimes he has bad days when only a good back rub will calm him. Kat is proud to be the glue holding her family together ever since daddy died and mom has to work extra hard to support them. Oh my word, that's going to be emotional. When a summer trip doesn't go as planned, Cat and Chicken must spend three weeks with their grandparents that they've never met at a place called Gingerbread Island. So yeah, I feel like it's going to have kind of similar vibes to August Isle, but it's pretty high ratings. 
At 4.38, we have a book that's actually on my middle grade March TBR. Forever or a Long, Long Time by Kayla Carter is a book that deals with foster care. And I heard about this first from Chantel at Chantel Reads All Day. And I'm just really, really excited. And this has a 4.38 rating. With a 4.38 rating as well, we have Length of a String by Alyssa Brett Wiseman. I heard about this one from Amanda at The Curly Reader. She love, love, loves this book. Um, in this one, we follow a young Black girl who's adopted by a Jewish family. And I believe she finds the diary of her grandmother or something, which takes place during World War II. So it's going to have some World War II elements to it, but also this young girl adopted by, a, I believe, a white Jewish family. Uh, all of those things are buzzwords for me. It sounds so good. With a 4.4 rating, we have Sophie Choir and The Last Story Guard by Jonathan Oxier. I just finished Peter Nimble and His Fantastic Eyes, and this is a sequel to it. I just think these covers, all of these covers, I just think are so, so, so fun. <laughs> I love middle grade book covers. So this is a Peter Nimble adventure. It's been two years since Peter Nimble and Sir Toad. I'm not going to say what happened because that will spoil book one, but it's a sequel that I can now read because I read the first one with a 4.44 rating. The next one on this list is Blackbird Girls by Anne Blankman. And I believe this is two, two girls who become friends in the aftermath of Chernobyl and what happened there. So I've never read anything set during that time. And it just, I feel like that's going to be a really good one. The next one has a 4.45 rating and it's Planet Earth is Blue. Look at that gorgeous cover by Nicole Pantelik. Pantalikos. This is a tinier book. It's kind of small. 12-year-old Nova is eagerly awaiting the launch of the space shuttle Challenger. Nova and her big sister Bridget love astronomy and they plan to watch the launch together, but Bridget has disappeared and now Nova is in a new foster home. Nova is autistic. Speaking is hard for her. Teachers and foster families have always believed that she isn't as smart as other kids. Only Bridget knows how wrong they were, but now... As the liftoff draws closer, others begin to see how intelligent Nova really is. And every day she's counting down to the launch and to the moment when she'll see Bridget again. Oh, man. <laughs> I think I forgot what that was even about. That sounds so good. Number nine is Astrid the Unstoppable, which has a 4.45 rating as well. And this is translated from Norwegian by Guy Pusey. It's by Maria Parr. Um, Astrid just is a... Little Thunderbolt, speed and self-confidence, that's Astrid's motto. Nicknamed the Little Thunderbolt, she spends her days skiing and sledding, singing merrily as she races down the hillside and drinking hot cocoa with her grumpy best friend and godfather, Gunvald. If only there were other children to share her adventures. And then new arrivals bring changes to the town and to Astrid's friendship with Gunvald. Luckily, Astrid has a plan to set things right. Sounds super cute. And then my highest rated unread book is book two in a series. It has a 4.55 rating, and that is North or Be Eaten, which is the second book in the Wing Feather Saga by Andrew Peterson. So again, I can't tell you anything really about this. It is a fantasy adventure story. The first book took me a little bit to get into, but I have heard that the series continues to get better and better. And this was not the only book on this list, but it's the next one that I need to read. So I do have books three and four, which were maybe even rated higher than this or similar to this one. I think they were higher, but I just went with this one because this is the next one that I need to read. But it's exciting to me that the others are even higher, which is typical with a series. The people who are going to continue with a series usually like it. <laughs> so each book might get just better and better in their minds. But, I've ha but I have heard that that's true in this case as well. So those are the books that I have not yet read. And now I'm going to go through the list of highest rated books that I have read on my middle grade shelf. So coming in at number 10 with a 4.46. So we're already like nearing the top of my other list. So the books, the highest rated books that I have not yet read started at 4.35 and ended at 4.55. And even book number two, Astrid the Unstoppable, was 4.45. So this is starting at 4.46, which would have slid it right in there into the number two spot. Um, and, all of, and this is the lowest of my highest rated. So it's going to just go up from here. Anyways, Sweep, the story of a girl and her monster, also a Jonathan Oxier book. He was in the other pile as well. Um, this was our middle grade March group read the second year of middle grade March. So uh, it was, and it's fabulous. It's definitely worth the read. It's about a young girl who's a chimney sweep in Victorian London. One day she gets trapped in a chimney and a piece of charcoal becomes a golem and rescues her. And 
it's a story of Nan and her golem. And I loved it. It's definitely worth all of the hype. <laughs> Land of Stories book two, The Enchantress Returns is number nine on this list and it has a 4.47 rating. This is again a sequel, but we follow this brother-sister duo who learn in the first book that they have the ability to jump into this land of stories, this book of fairy tales. It's this land where all of the fairy tales kind of exist together in one little world and it's a lot of fun. And I need to continue with that series. I'm on book three. <laughs> The next one, number eight, with 4.48, is The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise by Dan Gemeinhart. Love, I love this story so much. In this one, we follow, I forget her name. Coy oh, my word, Coyote is her name. <laughs> in this one, we follow Coyote and her dad, who travel around in a bus. They're kind of like nomads. They just travel around. They don't really settle down anywhere, but Coyote has this great desire to return to her hometown. She has a great reason for that, and she knows that if she just comes right out and asks her dad, he will not do it. So she's a little bit manipulative and trick uses some tricks up her sleeve to get her dad to head back towards their hometown. Along the way, they pick up some people, make new friends. It's beautiful, and the end will have you sobbing, sobbing. It's so good. Number seven is a book that I've talked about so many times on my channel, The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. This won a Newbery Honor a couple years ago. It's so good about a young girl and her little brother who are evacuated in London during the, uh, during the, right before the Blitz when all the children were sent out to the countryside. However, our main character here, Ada, she's 10 years old and she's basically never left her house. She was born with a club foot and her mother is greatly abusive and never let her leave the house, never allowed her to learn to walk. Like it just was really, really horrific, the things that she had to deal with. Um, but she manages to sneak away with her brother and they end up in a, in a home with a, a woman in the country who wasn't really expecting to become <laughs> a foster parent and has her walls up as well. And it's just about these, these kids and this woman connecting. And it's a really, really beautiful story. Love it so much. Worth all the praise. The next two are parts of different series, but the first one that I have here is a combo book. It has 4.56. So now we are officially above all my unread books. So all the rest of these are higher than all my unread books. But this is Betsy Was a Junior and Betsy and Joe by Maud Hart Lovelace. And I think this is book six and seven, seven and eight. That's close. This is book seven and eight in this series. And I got to say, I think these ones were my favorite. So it's no surprise to me that these are the ones that are on the list because yeah, these are just a lovely, this is a lovely series where we follow Betsy and her friend Tacey. Uh, from the time they're five years old. And in this one, they are juniors in high school. So the series kind of goes pretty quickly through Betsy's life. It's a coming of age story. We follow her all the way through. And the, and the writing in the books advances as you get older with Betsy, which is kind of cool because the first books are very simplistic. <laughs> uh, and I didn't really love them right away. But as she got older, I did kind of fall in love with this series and with Betsy and her friend group. And it's just, it's a very sweet, very sweet series. At 4.62, my number five book on this list is The Deathly Hallows, um, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. This is book seven in the series. A few of the Harry Potter books were in the top highest rated of my owned books, but I definitely was only going to pick one of them. And this is the last book in the series. We follow Harry and Ron and Hermione, and I'm sure you know all about it. It deserves its place. It's a fabulous series. If you haven't read them and you're at all interested, try to find the audiobooks narrated by Jim Dale because he's spectacular. They're so, so good. So good. Uh, number four at 4.63 is A Place to Hang the Moon by Kate Albus. This is a lovely story. Also the story of kids who are evacuated to the countryside during World War II. However, this is a little bit different because... In this book, we follow a sibling group of three, and they had been living with their grandmother, who at the very beginning of the book passes away. Their grandma was not super kind, but she did leave them a rather large inheritance, and their lawyer tells them this might be their opportunity to choose their own family or find a family, and not to tell anybody about their inheritance. They have this chance now to, to see if they can find a family. So they go out to the countryside, and we just follow them and what happens out there. They have a little bit of a tough time in their first family and they find solace in the library, which is always lovely, and the, in the librarian as well. And it's just a very sweet, heartwarming story that 
deserves its place and it has a 4.63 rating. Very high. Number three, I can't find. <laughs> So I'm using I'm using book five as a, as a representative, but it's actually book four, never seen. It's around here somewhere, friends, but my room has middle grade books all over it right now. This is Keeper of the Lost Cities. Book four is never seen, and it has 4.63 as well, same as A Place to Hang the Moon. This is a really fun fantasy middle grade series. They are chunkamunka books, but it goes so quickly because the pacing is spot on. You just cannot stop turning the pages. We follow Sophie. She's our main character and her group of friends who is with her right from the first book as they kind of are fighting the evil in this world where they live. And it's really fun. And it's very high, like high action, high adventure. And the characters are so well drawn out. Like each of the different people in the friend group have their own issues that they're working through and their own kind of coming of age story. Shannon Messenger just does a really good job with that. Number two with a 4.67 rating is a graphic novel, When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed. This is actually a graphic memoir of Omar Mohammed's story of him and his brother fleeing from Somalia to a refugee camp in Kenya. And it is so good. So good. We really learn about their story in particular, but just life at this refugee camp and school, how school is done, how food is done, their struggle to find connections and to fit in being orphans. Um, the brotherly love between them is really cool. And I love that at the back, we have actual photographs of the real Omar and his brother. Hassan is the name of his brother. And... It's just, oh my goodness. I think this is, books like this are so important for kids to read. Just get a, a, a glimpse of life outside of anything that would be considered normal to them. Love, love, love. Love this book so much. And then my highest rated red middle grade book is with a 4.7. 4.7 is ridiculously high on Goodreads. It's Fighting Words by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. This is the same author of The War That Saved My Life. I wouldn't just hand this one off to any middle grader. It, it does deal with some really difficult topics, in particular sexual assault of these two sisters uh, by their mother's boyfriend. Um, it deals with foster care. It deals with attempted suicide. It deals with bullying. And it just is so good. I think it's an important story for girls to read, but I don't think it's an it's a story they should read kind of on their own, but with an a trusted adult influence reading it alongside of them or being able to stop and talk about it with them. Uh, I do think it's a very important book uh, because sadly the statistics are just astounding of how many young girls experience in their life some sort of uh, sexual molestation or abuse or trauma and. It, I think stories like this are very important for those girls um, to see. I love the voice of our main character. She, <laughs> I didn't love that um, she swears a lot, <laughs> but you don't see that language in here. The words are changed, but you know that she's swearing. And I didn't really love that, but it was kind of funny at the same time. Um, and knowing all that she's going through, it's really like the least of my worries with her life. Like she just had a lot to work through. Um, but yeah, I just thought this was a, fab a fabulous read. And I, I believe I gave it five stars. Um, so it's not surprising to me that it has such a high rating. So those are my red books that have high ratings. Man, I have some really wonderful books on my shelves. And I have a stack of books that I'm really excited about as well. A couple of these you may see by the end of the month that I have actually read. Um, hopefully at least forever or a long, long time because that's on my TBR, but I might pick up a couple others of them as well because now I'm just so excited to read them. But I hope that you enjoyed this first part of my shelf spotlight this month, um, highlighting my highest rated middle grade books. It's going to be very interesting, the difference between the highest rated and the lowest rated. There's a, 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 a glaring um type of book, I guess you could say, or category of book that is in my lowest rated. Uh, and it, it's going to be interesting to chat about that when we get to that video, which will be coming up sometime soon. <laughs> but I hope that you enjoyed this. I would love to chat with you in the comments below. Have you read any of these books? Do you agree with their high rating? Have you added any of them to your TBR? I hope that I was able to describe them enough to entice you a little bit. And, um, and let's just chat below because you know, I love talking with you down there. And thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I really appreciate you. And I hope that you're having a wonderful day. And I will talk to you in another video very soon. Bye.